Spider-Man, Snyder-Man, friendly neighborhood dealer man, spins a deal any size, you got good stuff, he will buy, hey there, here comes the Snyder-Man, here comes the Snyder-Man, here comes the Snyder-Man, Snyder-Man. That's right, I'm the Schneider Man, and we're coming off a very, very busy weekend. I went over to Long Island at the Eternal Con, and uh, I just hung out and did some business. Uh, I did business with artists, I did business with dealers, I did a bunch of deals. I was busy. Uh, I put in like a 12-hour day on Saturday to support the diversity that is Anthony's Clever Work Art. <laughs> I usually do that with doing dealers, but I'm not on tonight. And we're gonna postpone Wednesday because there's a couple auction houses uh, ending that night. And we're going for a Saturday show. Uh, so I'm back on doing dealers this Saturday. Okay, so no Wednesday show. And I had all this to curate and debut for the Wednesday show, but as soon as I uh, sign off of this video, I am going to, mm. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna do a big website update. Anything that I don't wanna use on the Doing Dealers this Saturday, I am going to get up on the website with the Bobby uh, managing the update of the website. So look for a cool website update from the Anthony of the comic book art. So this is some of the other stuff, the other categories that I did. This is the highlights of the other categories. Uh, I got a Donald Duck fast action book. Oh, look at that. Out of luck? That's like me playing poker. I'm out of luck. Okay. But this is one of those fast action where you can flip through it and see the pictures on the, like that. That's what it was supposed to be. These are a rarer version, and this is not worth $250. Jesus Christ, he could be thrown in on a deal. It's worth like 40 bucks. Look at that face. That's the classic Donald Duck face. I relate to that face, especially today. All right, anyway. All right, so, but it, it just, wow. Let's go over some of the highlights of these different categories that I love. I got some Marvel memorabilia. Uh, I got a couple pieces of the Marvel stationery. Uh, this is the folder that you sent away for. Look at that. Where is that art? Oh my God. Just looking at that picture is just like, Wow. And look who's right in the middle. Your ever loving blue eyed thing. Well, should I say brown eyed? Because I have brown eyes. Since I represent Ben Graham. All right, now this is a stationary pad. I've seen this art before actually. And when I used to do private signings with Stan Lee, I used to just give Max a pad and have him sign all these. And I even have a couple of these signed, these reorder forms. That's rare because, I mean, there might've been what, I don't know, 30, 30 pages, but I'm not gonna count them right now. Maybe just 20, but I love that. I love this stuff. I really, and this, this is a Marvel Mania catalog. Uh, I actually had this art in my hand at one time. Oh man, it must have been 25 years ago because this was the end splash to Avengers, I want to say 80 or something like that, where the Black Knight joins the Avengers and they're like, Avengers assemble. So this was an end splash by Sal Buscema. And I know at the time it was like $700, $800. Oh my God, look at these. Look at this stuff. I love this stuff. So you have the, this is the catalog and you have some Stranko art because why? He was the publisher and, and heading this department because the other guy that Stanley trusted first 
didn't, you know, he was horrible at fulfillment or he stole a bunch of money or whatever, I don't know, the story. Look, I have these. I have my original set of these Mark six inch figures, the original set. And I, you talk about who's got the love for this, for this business and this source material. I remember the day where I went to some five and dime store, I forget what it was called in Vegas. And I was, I rode my bike there and it was way too far for me to ride my bike. I, I don't think I should have been that far away, but to get these, and there was a bin of them. And I made sure I got the red, the red Iron Man, the red Spider-Man, the green Hulk, the red Daredevil. And then I got the blue ones of these two because I mean, the Thor, you know, didn't really match up color wise, but I made sure I got all my, the right colors based on what I thought they should be. And then these, these posters, I, I, I pretty much have these all self portraits, the colon, I, the, you know, they have them stashed someplace. And then I tried to buy the original art to this one. I have the Jack Kirby file copy stat of this, uh, the FF that's around, you know, so I've, you know, I've tried to collect some of this stuff and uh, it's just, it's just a wonderful source of nostalgia for me because I was buying comics in the Bronze Age when I was 10 years old, but I wanted back issues right away. I wanted to collect one up of Spider-Man, FF, everything. Journey into Mystery, and uh, I didn't really care about condition. Uh, and, uh, you know, I remember buying the 20 centers off the twirly rack and uh, getting this, this Marvel memorabilia where and whenever I could. So I have a bunch of this stuff stashed and I love it. All right, so not so much DC. So in the diversity that is Anthony's comic book art, I got a deal where I had the first Falcon, the namer number one, the cap that gets, you know, joins into uh, Tales of Suspense. And that's the first Modoc, see? Look, look, look. That Bill's using so much. Modoc. And that's the classic Iron Man versus Cap cover. Hey, this was a prequel to Civil War, but it was in 1960, I'm gonna say six. Oh my gosh, I'm wrong. 64, it's even before that. So 1964, the year I was born. Yep, this comic's as old as me, yay! Okay, and then this one is like the first Rogue. So we got Marvel memorabilia, we got Raw comics, we got something I like in Donald Duck, and then I specifically bought this one. I, I paid a lot for it, I'm gonna get it graded. It's the best mad one I've ever owned. Uh, I paid up for it, had to pay up for it. Uh, guy wanted basically graded price on it, but got him down a little bit, and then I'm gonna get it clean, pressed, and graded and see what happens. I hope it's around this. I mean, if you look at this and you look at that, I mean, this is from, what, 51? Let's look at this one. The mad one. Wow, look at that. Look how pretty that is. Look at that. Still got high gloss. It's got some stuff that can be taken out with a good press. Am I right on this one? 52, all right. 52, mad one. And you know, geez louise. I mean, you know, all the, all the hype with the Marvel number ones, when you, when you look back in the comic book history and what became the history of comic books and, and the, the lore that is Mad Magazine, this could be considered more, uh, just as important as a Marvel number one. I mean, especially because Marvel number ones don't happen until FF one, Spidey one, Hulk one, and Hulk got canceled. You know, Daredevil one. This ended up becoming, you know, when one door closes, another door opens, you know, in, in that respect. I mean, he gets shut down in comic book format. 
He goes to magazine format. He keeps the artists and gives them a job to do their features. Like, you know, Kurtzman was doing the movie parodies and Davis was doing the movie parodies, you know, and Aragones was doing the marginals and the, and the, and, and then, you know, everybody had, he, he kept everybody on to have a job. And this was, when this went to magazine format, this was out circulating, man, you could have probably the top 20 comic books. I mean, it was in the four or five million. And you know, comic books were not getting close to that in that era, in the 70s era. They were canceling books, you know, for, anyway. Now, this is a couple, this is a Marvel number one. This is the first appearance of The Punisher. And I bought this straight up uh, in a deal and that is going to be offered. And then this, I bought a collection of pulps. The guy was going to sell this one for, you know, way too little money. And I'm like, wait a minute, don't sell that one. I'll buy the whole box. What do you want for the whole box? And uh, because this one is one of those super classic covers and look at that spine. It's like VF. You know, I hated to take it. I knew the guy that was gonna buy it for cheap, but I had to like make a move on the whole deal. And this, oh my goodness, this is considered a classic robot high beam cover. Uh, and look at that outfit. Is she gonna go, looks like a, I mean, you cut this off and it looks like a, a modern figure skating costume. All right, so let's get to the, the real important stuff, and that is the Anthony in the Anthony's comic book art. So this is a Golden Age hero page from Speed Comics. So look forward to that. Either hit, hitting the, uh, the, probably gonna save this for dueling dealers next time. This is a Captain America 73, and then I did some business with Sean Chen. These are beautiful. Look at these. This guy is getting better all the time. Love his work. Uh, this one I'm gonna probably save for doing dealers. No, don't show that one. That's a doing dealers piece. Are you staying on me? All right, so uh, look at this. I, I, got, I got together with Bernard Chang and got three of his covers. I got together with Nelson and did the Batman Fortnite stuff. I got to square up with the creator, Mr. Donald Mustard who's been very patient. So now all the pages are gonna be available. Riley Brown, Nelson, 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 Rodney Ramos, Rodney Ramos. Uh, this is a Sunny Trinidad deal uh, from my friend that lives a town over. Uh, these, these I gotta say for doing dealers. Two Epting pages, consecutive pages from Captain America 1. Wow. All right, this is a trade deal, this is a trade deal. So this is really cool because it's the first panel appearance of Gollum in that version that David Wenzel, uh, that I got together with, uh, painted this this version and uh, it was like a four issue miniseries and it, I thought it was really beautiful work and it's great representation of the source material. So I'm probably gonna save that for my kid. And then uh, we have the Dueling Dealers, not on Wednesday, but on Saturday, and me and the Android did post a pre-recorded claim sale on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And I've already gotten some response from that, but check it out. All those books, those uh, graded books are available and they were, the, they were the cache that was not put on eBay from last week in the business that we did at the diversity that was TerrificCon. So my foot is recovered from TerrificCon. Thank you very much. And that's about it. Yep, that's the recap from the weekend of the Anthony's comic book art. So you guys keep calm, keep collecting, and we'll see you tomorrow.